Hi guys, it's your science teacher here, back with a, another video. This time I'm going to go through the whole of the topic of P14, which is light. So without further ado, let's get into the topic. The topic of light starts off by looking at what happens when light hits a surface and there is two things that can happen the light can reflect or it can refract and let's first have a look at what actually reflection is if the wave hits a smooth surface and reflects off that then what you notice is you get something called specular reflection and this is where the angle of incidence is equal to the angle. And this is what we see uh, if we have just a mirror and uh, we place that on a table, shine some light in, measure the angles. The angle of incidence will always equal the angle of reflection. But what happens if the surface is not flat and it is actually at an angle? Well, what you get is something called diffuse reflection and this basically means that the angle of incidence no longer equals the angle of reflection it can bounce off at many different angles now the images caused from reflection are called virtual images the reason they're called virtual images is because they cannot be projected onto a screen just think about it if you look uh, into a mirror that is not uh, going to be able to be put onto a piece of paper. That's how I like to think of virtual images is can if I hold a piece of paper there will the image show up on that piece of paper. Not all surfaces have high reflectivity and another property of light when it enters a material is it causes refraction. And this is the property of light of slowing down or speeding up. Look at this wave here entering this glass block. Now, it enters at an angle. However, it is going faster outside the block as it travels through inside the block. This causes the light to bend and therefore slow down. Now, when it exits the block, it will speed up again and go at exactly the same direction it was going at before. I can show that using my incident angle and my refraction angle. My refractive angle is always smaller than my angle of incidence. Now, it's important to remember the more dense the object, the larger the amount of refraction. This is because it will slow down the light more. Now, it's important to take into account refraction in our everyday lives. For example, if you are going spearfishing, you would have to make sure you took into account refraction when you throw the spear or you might miss the fish. This is because the actual location of the fish will look different to the position you see with your eyes because light slows down when it enters the water. When we go to the cinema, a projector is used to create a real image. This is an image that is showing actually what is happening. Um, it's not like a mirror which produces a virtual image. This is something that can be projected onto a screen. But what I find fascinating uh, about when you go to the movies is all of the colours that are produced on the screen. But what is going on in producing them colours? You can see here at the top right hand corner of the screen, you can see the primary colours of light. Uh, and they are green, blue and red. And with certain combinations, I can make the secondary colours. If I use 
green and red, that equals yellow. If I have green and blue, that makes cyan. And if I have red and blue, that makes magenta. But how are the images created on the screen? But how are the images created on the screen in a movie theater with all of them different colors? Well, what they do is they use a series of filters that absorb different colors of light. Here, for example, I have a red pencil. And if you shine a light on that red pencil, you will see it looks red. I know that sounds fairly obvious, but that's important to remember. When you shine light, you are putting all the visible colors of light on the spectrum onto that pencil. Now, this red pencil will absorb every other single color apart from that red going into it. So only the red will be reflected and into your eyes. Now, if you look at an object and it is black, that means that it has absorbed all of the colors in the spectrum. And if it is white, then it is reflecting all of the colors in the spectrum. And this is the principle of how your TVs show all of them bright colors that appear on your screen. We can use refraction um, to produce images. And when we do so, this is called using a lens. And there's two types of lenses we need to know about. They are convex lenses and concave lenses. And convex lenses are also known as converging lenses. This is because the light always converges on a central point after being refracted through the object. So after the light will all reach a focal point. Just like that. Concave lenses, however, are known as diverging lenses because after they pass through the object, the ray diagrams, they spread out from one another. But why is all this important? What do we need to know about this? Well, we need to be able to know uh, what different images will look like when we look at them through a convex and a concave uh, lens. If I look at an image through a convex lens, so here I have a uh, black palm tree, and if I look at it through a convex lens and it's less than one focal length, away, then what I notice about my image is it gets enlarged and it gets enlarged on the same side. And that means um, that it's a virtual image that is produced. And here I'm just drawing on my ray diagrams as well. And they're actually getting further apart. That's why I'm getting an enlargement of my images because these rays are getting further away from each other. Now, if it's exactly one focal length away, what I notice is that when I draw on my ray diagrams like so, uh, because my lines are exactly parallel now, uh, no image will be produced at all. And when I am between one focal length and two focal lengths away, I will get an enlarged inverted image produced. And if it's further than two um, focal lengths away, in fact, if it's two focal lengths away, it will be exactly the same length, uh, size and inverted. And if it's further than two focal lengths away, it will be um, inverted and smaller. 
Whenever I look through a concave lens, I can only ever create a virtual image. And the virtual image will be smaller than the actual size as well. And that's because of the fact when the rays hit the lens, instead of um, meeting up at a focal point, uh, they start to move off. And if I look at what it will look like through an eye, it will look something like this. I know at times it's quite hard to visualize how these lenses work. Um, so if you did really struggle, remember to check out my vision mats. Um, and if you really, really did struggle, you can uh, drop me a comment and I'll try and explain it my best. Thank you for watching and remember if you do like the video, drop it a like and subscribe to the channel.